The gender pay gap is often the most reported workplace difference between men and women. But when it comes to business, there's more than just that one disparity. Female entrepreneurs looking to start their own company also face a funding gap, especially from venture capitalists. Last year, VCs invested more than $58 billion in companies with exclusively male founders. Women received just under $1.5 billion. That's according to the venture capital database, PitchBook. And the number doesn't get any better when it comes to the actual deals. Compare under 6,000 male-funded companies receiving funding to under 400 for ones started by women. That's 16 times more funding to companies run by men than women. Now, one reason for the disparity is the vast majority of investors are men. Analysis shows less than 10% of VC partners are women. Other reasons include the disconnect between investors and founders on projects. Plus, women often ask for less funding from the beginning. Enter Lauren Schult. She's the founder of The Flex Company, a company that recently secured over $4 million in funding for its menstrual discs. Schult is an unlikely entrepreneur. With a background in marketing, she had no intention of starting her own business. But her curiosity led her on a different path. Karina Huber caught up with Schult during the Forbes Women's Summit last month. She began by asking Schult what made her want to get into the menstrual business. I decided to get into this business because I was suffering from infections for 15 years and I learned that my infections were being caused by tampons. So I would spend one week of every month on my period and one week out of every month with an infection caused by the products that I had to use for my period. So you had a marketing background, but you had no experience starting a business and no experience in science, as far as I know. Uh, was this a big challenge for you to decide, all right, I'm going to start a business and I'm going to have to do a lot of research, and what made you want to do that? I was terrified. <laughs> I had no intention of being an entrepreneur or being a founder. I didn't know how to raise money. I didn't know anything about manufacturing. I didn't know anything about the FDA. And I slowly started surrounding myself with experts in all of those different areas and telling them about my passion and my mission and my purpose in life, which is helping women, helping women feel more comfortable in their own bodies. Um, I knew that the road would be really, really tough. And um, with a background in marketing, I really spent a, about a year and a half in, in the research phase before I got up enough courage to quit my job. When you originally pitched your idea to investors, what was the reaction? <laughs> when I originally pitched the idea to investors, um, there were some people who were very hesitant and who did not feel comfortable. Um, and to those people, I was very grateful because it was a very quick, um, obvious way for me to figure out that they were not people that I wanted to work with. Over time, when I became more comfortable sharing more of myself and my personal journey, as well as the, the specific pain points around tampons, so getting really into the nitty gritty of the terrible user experience, as they like to say in Silicon Valley, um, then I started to have uh, breakthroughs. But you had to convince them that it wasn't just you, that there was a big market for this. Yeah, I think the, the first like natural inclination is, well, if tampons are so terrible, why does everyone use them? And I said, yes, tampons are the most ubiquitous and also most hated consumer product on the market. I cannot think of any like product that is um, that widely used and also that highly despised. And I think it kind of opened people's up, minds up a little bit when you put it that way, like, oh, interesting. Like, m maybe there is something there. And, and secondly, investors love, you know, markets ripe for disruption, right? Or they say they love markets ripe for disruption. It's challenging when y you are the first to um, really, really come out with uh, an entire new, entirely new piece of technology. And so um, sometimes investors don't want to be the first in, but once you have a few investors who understand your vision and your mission and who are behind you, um, they kind of help rally other, other people behind your idea and, and help you um, continue to fundraise. In 2016, you secured over $4 million in funding for Flex. That same year, another company called Thinx came out with their menstrual underwear and many other feminine hygiene products hit the market. Why do you think the time is ripe for these kinds of products? We've been using the same products more or less for about 80 years. Um, and I think that it's like women have had enough. 
I think we're also reaching this interesting inflection point in which women are more comfortable talking about their bodies and talking about um, some of the medical issues that we face. And um, access to funding is actually opening up a little bit more for women. So it's a rising tide floats all boats is the expression, right? And so we are certainly not the first type of company to um, really invest in R&D to try and make a, a medical device that's fundamentally different. Um, but we have the uh, fortunate timing, I think, of kind of coming in concert with um, companies that are making garments or companies that are uh, reselling tampons and like a subscription model. And together, uh, we're raising awareness about, I guess, I think the period industry as a whole.